fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. If you like to put on shows for your friends, here's a tip. Take a look at the special Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kick cereal packages at your grocer's right now. Just turn them around, and you're looking at a magic Disneyland Park light-up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real, you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland Park at night. There's the rocket ship to the moon, and a special lion light-up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new true-life adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light-ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jets. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you there's a Disneyland Park light-up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland Park light-ups right now. Look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Tricks, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Toto were riding through Medicine Canyon on their way to investigate rumors that Sioux Indians on a reservation were threatened by starvation. Presently, they saw their friend, Chief Spotted Bear, lying on the ground. Oh, oh easy, oh. said a big fellow. Oh, they found him unconscious oh. and critically wounded by a bullet. They carried the old chief to a nearby cave, and after doing all that was possible in treating the wound, Toto said... Not know if him live or die. I'd like to know who shot him. Be sure it's Indian from reservation. Toto, Spotted Bear has been a peace-loving leader. A new chief may mean an uprising. Now it's more important than ever that we know what's going on in the Sioux village. Uh, and me go there? Yes. Learn all you can. Stay several days if necessary. I'll stay here and help our friend fight for his life. If he dies, I'll join you in the village. Otherwise, I'll be here when you return. It was two days later, while Tonto was still away from the cave, when the old Indian came out of a coma, opened his eyes, and spoke for the first time. Water. Good for you, Chief. Now I'm sure you're going to recover. That same afternoon at Fort Pearson, several miles beyond the reservation, Colonel Dane, the Commandant, shook the flabby hand of a congressman from the East, the Honorable Horace Quigg. Congressman Quigg, it's a pleasure to have you here. Sit down, sit down, please. Thank you. This trip has been time wasted, Colonel Dane. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you came west to investigate conditions. As a member of the House Committees on both military and Indian affairs, I have been investigating. But I have learned nothing I didn't know before I left Washington. Yes, come in. Colonel Dane, sir, there's a delegation of Indians here. The new chief wants to see you. You are welcome, chief. But who are you? I am called Many Feathers. I am new chief of Ogallala Sioux. Well, well, an educated Indian. Where is the old chief, Spotted Bear? He has gone to land of great mystery. So he's dead. Spotted Bear was a good friend. Who is? Fat man. <laughs> Why, you arrogant savage. Congressman Quigg uh, comes from Washington. He helps make our laws. Uh, Why are you here, Chief Medifellas? My people hungry. 
I come to demand meat as promised in treaty. Well, I have shared army stores with Spotted Bear, but now our own supplies are nearly exhausted. The land is fertile, the grass is tall. Indians should raise wheat and cattle. We not farmers, we hunters and warriors. While there are plenty buffalo, we ask nothing. Now buffalo gone. What we eat? Uh, eat grass. Mr. Quick is joking, Chief Manifellers. He, he hasn't seen conditions in your village. Maybe him afraid to come look. Afraid? Why, you impudent savage, give me a squad of soldiers and I'll go from one end of the Sioux Nation to the other. That great honor for my people. I'll visit your reservation tomorrow. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger was sure he had won the fight to save Chief Spotted Bear's life. The aged Sioux leader had just finished drinking a cup of broth when Tonto rode into the cave with an aged Indian woman sharing his horse. Mushka, Mushka, oh, he, is, he, is, uh, he brings Spotted Bear's wife. That's fine, Tonto. You'll be able to care for him. Tonto helped the old woman from Scout's back. Without a word, she went to Spotted Bear's side. He find her singing death song outside Sioux camp. What about the man who shot Spotted Bear? Me trail him to camp. Oh. Him young fella called Many Feathers. Spotted Bear, did you hear that? Uh, me hear. Many Feathers, his son, me adopt. A son? And he shot you? Him good Sioux. Him think white man make fool of me. Maybe him right. Him want to save tribe from starving. Kimakabe, there's people in village think Spotted Bear dead. Them choose many feathers, new chief. Him want to make war with soldiers. He'd have no chance. Other Indians help. Plenty Indians from other tribes go to Sioux village. They must learn more about his plans. Me go back to village? Yes, and I'll go with you. Spotted Bear's wife will be here with the old chief. Have me got clothes? You dress like Indian? Yes, I'll stain my skin and put on war paint. We'll go to the reservation tomorrow. And to be on the safe side, we'll leave our saddles and bridles here and ride bareback. We'll make Indian packs and rope bridles. The following morning, an army ambulance, accompanied by seven cavalrymen, commanded by Corporal Mahoney, rolled across the Sioux Indians' vast reservation. Get up! Get up there! The pompous congressman, Quigg, sat beside the corporal who drove the ambulance and had his horse tied to the tailgate. Suddenly, the corporal cried, The safe for service! I see a hundred engines! Maybe two hundred! They're charging! Oh, hold there! Oh, oh! I've got to get to my horse so I can fight. You take the reins, Mr. Quigg. Turn the ambulance around and head for the fort. Get around there. Get around. The troopers opened fire on the attacking Indians, and in the running gunfight soon ran out of ammunition. Right, fourth men! Come on, follow me! Indian bullets ripped through the canvas top of the ambulance and whistled over the troopers' heads. But strangely, the Indians make no attempt to kill, capture, or pursue the cavalryman. Instead, they closed in around the ambulance, driven by the congressman, and brought it to a halt. In the forefront of the painted brave surrounding the ambulance, many feathers sat on a paint horse. His dark eyes were contemptuous as he looked at the panic-stricken Quig. You'll gain nothing by this outbreak. We gain much. We purposely allowed soldiers to escape. They take news to fort. You are important man. So Colonel Dane will ride with all men he can muster to rescue you. He'll kill you all. You're wrong. Colonel and troops will be decoyed into Badlands by some of my men. Before they return, we will capture fort. But you... Some of my men will put on army uniforms. Others will hide in buildings around parade grounds. When cavalry comes, we open gates. When cavalry inside... We open fire from all sides and kill everyone. <laughs> About an hour after the capture of the congressman, the Lone Ranger and Toto, disguised as Cheyenne warriors, reached the place where the ambush had taken place. 
They threw rein and dismounted beside the abandoned ambulance. Oh, 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 easy, oh, easy, fella. Easy, easy. After a short examination of the ground and the letters from the congressman's pocket, they realized that Quig had been captured by Indians. Otto, we'll follow the trail and try to rescue the congressman. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats, the good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto continued a slow, painstaking examination of the confusing Indian trails, Corporal Mahoney faced Colonel Dane and other officers in the headquarters building at the fort. Corporal, are you sure the congressman was captured? That I am, sir. Looking back from the hill, I saw them toting him away. Gentlemen, do you know what this means? Unless we save Quig, we may be court-martialed. We'll have to muster every man, use every horse he can walk. You'll be leaving the fort practically defenseless, sir. What else can I do? The Indians will oppose us with more men and better arms and horses than we have. Even if I lose the fort, I'll have to do all I can to save that confounded twig. Night had fallen when the Lone Ranger and Tonto finally reached the Indian camp deep in the Badlands. Leaving their horses outside the circle of wigwams, they cautiously made their way to the chief's wigwam. The inside of the wigwam was faintly lighted by the glow of fires. The Lone Ranger and Tonto saw the congressman lying on the ground, tightly bound. The Lone Ranger whipped out a knife and stepped to Quig's side. Take it easy, Quig. We're friends. Seeing that the rawhide thongs were being cut, Quig became convinced that he was truly in the hands of men who hoped to rescue him. He quickly told of Many Feathers' plot against the fort. The Lone Ranger listened, then said, Are we having a second to lose? Sir Quig, there's a war bonnet and blanket. Put them on. Whatever you say. He must not be. Yes. Indian outside. Them camp guards. They've heard us. Can you see them? Ah, there's six men. Too old for warriors. Them armed with bow, arrow, knife, tomahawk. Many feathers probably gave all the rifles to the men who were to attack the fort. That's right. All right, I'll go first. Follow me and bring Quig. Ah. I wish I were out of this. Here goes. Hooray! Come The Lone Ranger's guns and the shock command surprised the camp guards. They fell back, but held their bows ready. Then Tonto and Quig came out. Though the congressman wore a blanket and headdress, his size and the sound of his boots told the guards that their white prisoner was being rescued. No! The Lone Ranger fired as he ran, and his bullet struck the arms of two Indians who were fitting arrows to their strings. Get Quig to the horses, I'll cover you! The Lone Ranger's revolver fire drove back the Indians momentarily, but not until a thrown knife slashed the Lone Ranger's sleeve. As the Lone Ranger fired again, two tribesmen fell wounded. The others dodged into the shadows of the wigwams, trying to head off the fugitive. Come on, we'll make it. Hey, Silver! Come here, Scout! Run past it, Quig! I, I can't! Me help you! Scout and Silver had heard the Lone Ranger shout and came running up as the three men reached the edge of the village. Here come horses! I'll take Quig on my horse. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Quig. Up you come. Come on, Silver! Come on. 
the meantime, Colonel Dane and his men were lured many miles from the fort, only to lose track of the Indians they pursued in the rocky badlands. While the troopers hunted the enemy, the decoy band of braves rejoined the main force of Indians. Under cover of darkness, picked men scaled the wall of the fort, overpowered the sentries. Then opened the main gate. After leaving Tonto and Congressman Quigg some distance from the fort, the Lone Ranger rode on and saw Indian warriors pouring through the gate. In his Indian disguise, the Lone Ranger attracted no attention as he rode into the fort with the others. He saw many feathers on the parade ground giving orders in the Indian tongue. Then the chief spoke in English. Is any warrior here who speaks like white man? I do. Come here. Diane, what is your name? I am called Chosi Wagatak, man who travels alone. Maybe you help lure soldiers into fort. Stay with me. It's breaking day. They may see that something wrong. I will have braves in soldiers' uniforms on the walls. You will answer if questions are asked. You are wise, chief. But what about flag? Uh -huh. If soldiers return after sunrise... They will know something wrong unless they see flag. Come, we look for flag. Leaving the parade ground, the Lone Ranger and Many Feathers climbed the stairs to the colonel's office. The headquarters building occupied the position of a blockhouse in the corner of the stockade, its second floor windows being above the walls. Now the first rays of the rising sun gleamed through the east windows as the Lone Ranger opened a chest. Here, flag. As the Lone Ranger bent to take the colors from the flag locker, Many Feathers suddenly jumped back and whipped a tomahawk from his belt. You not Indian. You spy. What do you mean? There, where sleeve a shirt cut. I see white skin. Now you die. Half turning from the locker, the Lone Ranger reached for his guns as Many Feathers threw the hatchet. The Lone Ranger dodged an instant too late. The handle struck his head a glancing blow just as he triggered one of the guns. The bullet missed the rebel leader of the Sioux. The impact of the tomahawk handle staggered the Lone Ranger for a moment. Like a panther, many feathers sprang at him with a knife. Evading the knife thrust, the Lone Ranger crashed a sledgehammer blow to the Indian's jaw. Many feathers went limp. His knees buckled and he dropped to the floor. Then a bugle sounded in the distance. The soldiers are coming. I'll have to raise the flag. There was no time to tie many feathers. The Lone Ranger rushed to the parade ground with the flag and raised it to the top of the pole. The flag was upside down, a signal of distress. The Lone Ranger raced to his horse for his pack of clothing, then hurried back to the colonel's office. He saw many feathers still unconscious on the floor, and through the window observed that Colonel Dane had halted the cavalrymen about a quarter of a mile from the fort. Quickly, the Lone Ranger stripped off his Indian disguise. After he was dressed in his own clothes and his mask was back in place, many feathers regained consciousness. The Indian looked at the masked man, who said... My friend and I saved the life of Spotted Bear. Oh, so he is alive. Yes, and your trap for the soldiers has failed. Look out the window. The soldiers have been warned of trouble in the fort. They've halted. How them know of trouble? Look out the other window and you'll see. Uh, the colors are flying upside down. It is you and your warriors who are trapped. You can't fight your way out. And if you try to hold the fort, you'll be starved into surrender. My people are holding big hostage. If you mean Congressman Quigg, he's free. Uh, I know when truth is spoken, I have lost. Many feathers, you're a brave man of high ideals. You were willing to do anything to help your people, but you've only hurt them. Yes, I hurt them. Now they're sure to starve, but I am glad Spotted Bear is living. I shot him with heavy heart because I thought I could do more for tribe than he do. Do you want to add to your people's misery? No. Then tell them to throw down their weapons. Lead them out to the soldiers under a white flag. They aren't likely to be punished. Other tribes have done worse and were only returned to their reservations. Yes, but soldiers will hang me. You were willing to take Spotted Bear's life for the welfare of your people. Are you not willing to risk your own? My life belongs to my people. I do as you say. Many feathers, 
Let me shake your hand. Ah. Now we'll go and arrange a surrender. An hour later, a conference was in progress in the commanding officer's office at Fort Pearson. The Lone Ranger was there with Colonel Dane, to whom he had identified himself. The group also included Tonto and the Honorable Horace Quigg, both of whom had arrived shortly after the surrender of the rebels. The colonel spoke to the masked man. Mister, it's a good thing you thought of flying the killers upside down. Otherwise, the whole course of history in the West might have been changed today. Many feathers might become a great man. I hope the authorities don't insist on hanging him. I recommend that he be held as a prisoner of war. What do you think, Congressman Quick? He's a promising young man. He taught me a valuable lesson by showing me the need of fair treatment of the Indians. I bear him no ill will. Good for you. After he pays for his rebellious conduct, I'll try to get him a job in the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Colonel, what are you going to do with the other Indians who took part in the outbreak? I'll return them to the reservation as soon as Chief Spotted Bear is able to return. He'll be well enough to go home in a few days. Colonel, those Indians need food. I know that from first-hand observation. <clears throat> have you any suggestions, Congressman? Yes. Share what food you have with them. I'll see that more supplies are forthcoming. You heard. And draw up a list of recommendations for improving the military establishments, giving better treatment to the Indians. I'll present them to Congress and use all my influence to see that they're put into effect. That's fine, sir. Not over through here. We'll return to the cave. Ah. Now, wait. Yes? You saved my life. What's more important, you did the nation a great service. Isn't there something we can do for you in return? What did you say about the nation? I said you'd done the nation a great service. That statement, sir, is the greatest reward a man can receive. Adios. Goodbye, Colonel Dane. Goodbye, sir. Colonel, I shall eulogize the masked man in the halls of Congress. Who is he? He's a man for whom no word of praise is expressive enough, sir. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.